All right, everyone. How's everybody doing? Posts yesterday were amazing. I thought so too, Ted. Welcome back to Adobe Live, folks in the Behance chat. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your host again for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. Super pumped about today. As usual, our themes for this week and next week are superheroes and supervillains, so why wouldn't I be super stoked about what we have got going on today? I hope everyone can hear me loud and clear. I hope everyone can see me. Um, properly and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited. Uh, thank you to Jason for that awesome stream. Um, that dude is just so awesome. Um, from from the talent to the voice to the extra rockin' hair, uh, but I think everybody knows that. I think everyone, the general consensus is that Jason is pretty epic. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys uh, how you guys can get involved um, in the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with me, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna make a we're gonna make a super villain today. We're gonna be jumping into some photo compositing um, that I think is kind of a pretty good uh, intro to uh, photo compositing to combining multiple images um, and assets together into a cool composition um, to, I guess, spice up some photos all together um, according to our theme. Um, you folks know that I am taking the super villain theme to the max uh, for these, uh, but fear not if you are not a super villain, if you don't fancy yourself to be part of the dark side, you can always do hero themed um, pieces as well. So what I'm gonna do first uh, is I'm gonna show you folks the landing page um, so that you can all get involved with me, you can download the assets and follow along with me today, all right? Cornell says, I love photo compositing, me too. I'm having trouble figuring out how to upload to the Discord. Does anyone have any help? Yes, I am gonna go up over um, uploading to Discord today, Megan, so um, stay tuned. We're gonna do that in just a couple of minutes and hopefully that will sort out any issues you are having. So let me jump over to the stream uh, screen here. Uh, as you can see, I am on behance.net slash challenge slash Photoshop. Uh, I've got my dates here listed so I know I'm in the right place. Um, and if I scroll down here, you can see we have all of our challenges being updated um, and uploaded every day. They're unlocked at around 8 a.m. Pacific time um, so that you folks can jump in, download your files, and prepare for our streams at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Uh, so far, we have worked on making a mood board uh, for all of our challenges that come up in this nine challenge segment. Um, we have done some emblem design, designing um, either a a superhero or super villain emblem uh, for a fictional character for yourselves, whatever it is um, you'd like to design for. Um, yesterday we created a mock-up where we took those emblems or any other design of your choice and we mocked them up um, onto a piece of iconic clothing for a hero or villain, uh, which was pretty fun. Um, and today we're gonna do, like I said, photo compositing. It says, turn a person into a superhero or supervillain using compositing techniques. Try changing the background of the photo for a dramatic effect. Uh, pretty pumped about this. Um, and when you are done, you can come over here to the Discord um, and you can post it here. Now, one thing that I mentioned on the first day, but I'm gonna mention again, is at the uh, very top on the left-hand side of our Discord, we have an announcements read-only segment uh, where we have news, we have creative challenge, and we have going live. Now, I know that some people sometimes mistake the creative challenge channel for where they're supposed to be posting their challenge entries. However, this is not the right place. If you go in, you can see that our teammates uh, actually post um, the current challenge that's going to be going on for that day uh, with a link to the starter file, a link where you can turn tune into the stream live, and also where you can check out the replay. The place where you're actually supposed to post your challenges is a little bit farther down in the feedback segment if you go into current challenge. That is where everyone is posting. Um, if you still are trying to post here and you're still having a little bit of trouble, all you need to do is make sure that when you sign up for Discord that you have authenticated um, and approved your email. They may have sent you an email to your inbox just to um, make sure 
that uh, you are who you say you are. You're not some kind of robot or a droid who is trying to infiltrate the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge Discord server. Um, so make sure you do that. Um, and I'm going to scroll through here and, and kind of give you guys some shout outs. We had uh, some pretty excellent um, entries. I love this one um, from Scrows, which I thought was so awesome. Uh, we went through a lot of things yesterday, not only designing our mask, but making it a mock-up file so that you can change the perspective um, of your item and still add some cool designs on this. So I love it. I love that you put like this awesome background uh, in here. And I love that everything is black and white except for the cool color of this mask. I think you've done a great job. This is so rad. Um, it's given me some some Marvel vibes and some some spirit vibes for sure. Uh, we have some entries uh, from Mia Mor Luna, uh, which was neat. Uh, went into even changing the shape and design of the mask, which I thought was really neat. Uh, we've got uh, this from L Watch, which I thought was super cool. I love the design um, that you have added to this mask, and I also love that we have multiple views of it, so you can see the mask from the front, and you can also see it mocked up um, on like a quarter turn. Um, of a head, which is really neat. Uh, so very well done. Uh, we've got all of these from uh, one from Sunny. I'm loving this gold effect on here. It's looking really cool. Uh, this one from Pam, looking awesome. We've got like a whole character mocked up here, which is kind of what we're going to be doing today. I love that everyone kind of took an initiative to create uh, a character with the with the mask instead of just making the mask design. Um, so you, a lot of you guys are going to be kind of no stranger to what we're working on today. Uh, this from Valder, I love that you created an eye patch. This is really cool. Um, this one, these ones from Key, I like that you did multiple designs um, and created uh, more than one like hero and villain uh, kind of item here. Uh, everything looks super cool. Um, I also love this one from NYX. This is kind of similar to uh, the more vibrant design that I tried yesterday before going with the saturation that you all chose. Uh, but I love it. I love it. I really do. Um, and I can't wait to see what you folks create uh, for the next um, couple of days. I love this mask, by the way, from C. Uh, this, is, this is neat. This is very neat. Uh, or uh, from Sean, excuse me. Um, this is this is pretty cool. Very, um, very... Uh, in with uh, with the times right now. Um, so thank you all for participating. Um, and I'm going to jump into today's challenge so that I make sure I have enough time for what we're going to do because it's kind of a hefty uh, challenge. Uh, you know, I will post tomorrow all four challenges. Awesome, Ashant. I can't wait to see. Um, let me see if I've got any other things here. Do, do, do. Been a while since I've used Photoshop. Majesty, just jump in. This is definitely uh, a good uh, opportunity to either brush up on skills that you're a lot less familiar with, or if you're totally a beginner and you really um, are just trying to get into Photoshop and test it out maybe for the first time, this is also a good um, a good place to be and a good way to, to try that out. So I'm going to page this down. Um, and I'm gonna jump into my Photoshop. Uh, so the first thing that I've done is I have up my starter file from challenge number one that has a lot of my assets in it. If you did not participate in challenge one, that is totally fine. Um, all you have to do really um, is go back to our landing page um, and you can hit the get started uh, button here on the mood board challenge number one. Uh, you can download that file. Uh, I've been returning back to it every challenge just to start collecting all of the items that I have created thus far. Um, but just so you know, if you don't want to use this first challenge and you don't want to cultivate a mood board um, and it's maybe just a little too many steps for you, that is totally fine. And all of the starter files for each challenge, I do supply images to you. You, um, so that you don't have to do all this extra stuff. This is just kind of a cool way um, to continue to update um, all of your assets in one place and keep all of your reference and all of your um, your textures, your colors that you want to refer to um, all in the same area and keep it organized. Um, like I said, if you jump over to starter file number four, um, which you can get um, if you come back to the landing page and you hit get started under the photo compositing for today, uh, this is the file that you will get. It says challenge four, turn a person or superhero into a supervillain using compositing techniques. Try changing the background of the photo for dramatic effect, just as it says on the landing page. 
Um, and if I hide my info and unhide my composite assets, you can see I've got a cool light leak uh, image here for you. I've got a blank mask um, for those of you who did not participate yesterday. I've got an interesting cityscape image here, um, which I have also um, included with the link where you can download it for free on Unsplash and also um, the tag for the original photographer um, in case you guys wanted to give them a shout out and check out their work. Uh, and I've also put a portrait um, of a person we're going to change into a villain today uh, with the same information down below so you can check out that artist. Um, so what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to open these. I'm going to grab my portrait and I'm going to drag them out of my folders here because I'd like to have all of my stuff in one place instead of scattered throughout in a bunch of different folders. Another thing uh, that I can do is I can grab these two images and I can come over here. Let me make sure I'm selected on my reference board here. Um, I can grab these and I can come up here, I can hover it over starter file one and I can drop them into my reference folder. Let me drag them down in here. Um, and I can position these uh, in my images section uh, just to add a little bit more to my current mood board uh, so I can keep everything all together. Let me drag this right here. Let me grab this right here grab this cityscape here um, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put these in my in my file um, so I can keep my eye on the ball um, and return to any of these textures and images if I decide that I want to later on down the line um, and even though I supplied the mask to you folks um, the blank mask that I added to the previous starter file when we created our masks um, I'm actually going to drop this down um, into one of these folders just to get it out of the way and I'm going to use my mask that I designed um, yesterday. So I'm going to hold control and click that so I can go to my mask layer. I'm going to hover over here and I'm going to drop this into my file so that I have it here. So this is what I'm going to work with. Um, and the first thing that I am going to do is I'm going to use uh, some masks. I'm going to jump in with some masks and I'm going to um, mask around this character. I'm going to put her in a cityscape and then I'm going to do some cool uh, blending mode effects to also add uh, some cityscape textures over the top of her to give her kind of like a um, double exposure effect, which I think will be neat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I have my portrait layer selected. Um, I'm going to zoom in here pretty close and I'm going to use my lasso tool for this. Um, so I'm just going to select around her head um, and there's a lot of ways that you can do this. It really depends on what kind of photo you're using because you don't have to use the exact photo that I am using here to do this. Um, you can use a photo of your own choosing. I just wanted to make sure that I gave you uh, something to work with um, just in case you don't have your own assets. Um, you can also use a different tool. Uh, if you don't like to use um, the lasso tool, you can use maybe the pen tool um, if you're a little more familiar with that. Um, you can use the polygonal lasso tool if you want something a little more um, a little more straight um, and, and precise if you want. Um, I, however, I'm super comfortable using my stylus and just selecting around um, with, my, with my lasso tool, so that's what I'm gonna do. I'm using what is most comfortable for me uh, to create with. I'm gonna make the shape of her head a little rounder here, um, and then I'm gonna show you folks how I mask. Let's see, there we go. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let me cut a little bit out of here. Um, and I'm kind of guessing like how her head is shaped because um, as you can see you can't really you can't really see like the the um, her hair and the top of her head kind of disappears into shadow here um, and it's cool it's an awesome image already but it's to kind of make something according to our theme I think I do want to put something behind her I'm not really paying attention to where her shoulders will actually be um, because in this file I am actually going to um, kind of superimpose some other stuff over her shoulders. But if you're using different images and you decide you do want to select around her shoulder shape, you can kind of imagine um, where those would be um, if that suits you better. So 
now that I have this done, what I'm going to do is, and there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can save a selection if you like. You can um, you can do a lot of things to hold a, a shape position or a selection position that you've selected. What I do, and this might not be the best way to do it, but it's what comes naturally to me, is when I select something, but I realize I want to do some other steps in between, I'll make a new layer with Control shift in. I'll call it uh, Select. Um, and I'm going to take my paint bucket. I'm just going to drop a color in here so I have my shape because when I deselect it and I go do other things, I can always come back, hold control and click that layer and just grab my selection again, um, which works. So I'm just going to do that. I'm going to hide that. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my city and I'm going to drag it over my portrait. I'm going to control T to free transform it. And I'm going to drag this upwards a little bit because I'm not going to put just the picture as is over the top. I'm going to kind of, I'm going to kind of mess with this a little bit and make it look a little bit different. So I'm going to say enter um, to place that there. I'm going to hold control, click my selection that I have here. Um, and then with my city uh, layer still selected, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to hit this little rectangle with the circle in it um, to mask it. So now I have my cityscape um, right behind her, um, which works for me. Um, I think that looks pretty cool. Um, and then you can do a lot of different things here. You can either select your mask layer here and you can grab a brush and you can paint um, with uh, white um, and kind of fade stuff down if you like, or you can paint um, with black and kind of fade things up. Um, if you prefer, it's really up to you. Um, I think that it would be cool to kind of fade black upward um, at this point just to uh, kind of make the city disappear um, down into her shoulders. Maybe grab some white and fade that down just a little bit. I'm just using the default brush in Photoshop that is like a soft airbrush. Uh, right here and it works pretty well. Um, if you have a different way that you'd like to do this, you totally can, um, but using the masks, that is for me uh, kind of the easiest way to do things uh, without destroying my portrait. This is all above my portrait layer and I'm not ruining the portrait in any way. I'm kind of keeping it, um, keeping it uh, to its original shape um, and state. Uh, so I've got, now I've got like some cool city behind her. Um, now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click my city layer here and I'm going to say control J. Um, so I have two of these here. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to say um, delete layer mask. So I just have the city again, a duplicate of my city um, layer and it doesn't have the layer mask on it. The only thing that's different is that it's still in the position that I transformed the other one. Um, but if I say control T, I can just drag it back down and now I have a perfect non destroyed version um, of this cityscape and I'm going to place it like right here. I think this is pretty, pretty cool. Um, and then what I'm going to do uh, is to kind of give you a preview of what I'm thinking here is I think I'm going to add like a screen onto this just to kind of also pull that city like up onto her chest, which I think is pretty neat. Um, and something that you can do here um, is you can mask as well. Now, if I put this back on normal, um, since this is a pretty particular uh, shape uh, or kind of image, <clears throat> I could come over here, right click my lasso tool. I could select that polygonal lasso um, and I could go around here um, and select around a lot of these buildings uh, since they're all pretty uh, geometric, pretty pretty sh like sharp angles, sharp edges and things and get a really nice um, selection um, of stuff like this and then mask that out um, and use just the shapes like this. Um, so maybe I'll do that real quick. I'm trying not to be too terribly precious about this because I don't want to waste any time. But this is kind of a cool thing with an image like this is I can just kind of select around these really interesting signs um, and get a, uh, a piece of the city like so. I'm just going to go around. Ta-da! 
Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click, I'm going to say select inverse, um, and then I am going to hit that mask button again. Oops, actually, I don't want to do select inverse. Um, I just want this bit selected. There we go. Um, so now I have like some of that city coming up over the top of her. Um, and I can also um, put this on a screen. And then it has like this cool darkness about it um, behind here um, that I quite like. I might come back down here making sure on the city, the underneath that I select my layer here, go back to my brush uh, with my B key um, and hit that uh, with some white to kind of fade it a little more. Um, I think it's cool. I think it looks neat. Um, if I had more time, I would spend more time like really making things um, uh, pretty precise here, um, but I don't, so I won't. Um, and I'm just kind of going back and forth a little bit and adding um, in some painted areas, um, removing and adding a city around in there. And I think that looks pretty neat. Um, now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab my mask, trying to make sure I don't cut it too close here. I'm gonna grab my mask, I'm gonna free transform that with Control T, and I'm gonna fit this to her face real quick. And drag that around. I'm going to hold shift so that I can kind of squeeze it inward just a little bit and place that over her eyes. Hit enter. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to make this look a little more like it belongs on her face. So I'm going to make a shadow layer. Shadow. Uh, I'm going to grab my brush again with some black and I'm going to come in and I'm just going to draw some black underneath the eyes here um, so that it looks like it's kind of shadowing her eyes. Um, maybe turn that down on a lower opacity just a little bit. Um, and then on the mask, I'm gonna double click and I'm actually gonna use drop shadow. Um, I'm gonna hit drop shadow here uh, and I'm gonna, I'm keeping it on a multiply. I'm gonna turn the opacity down, make sure the distance is not too far. Um, I'm also gonna make sure I leave this on a 90 degree so that it's casting shadow down. Um, and I'm also, let's see, I might, I might turn the opacity down just a tad so it's not so harsh, but it just gives a little bit of shadow over her face, which I think looks pretty darn cool. Um, I think that works for now. I might spend a little more time on it um, if I had uh, more time to spare. Um, and then the last thing I'm gonna do is I added this weird light leak file in here um, because I think it would add some interesting texture um, and cool effect and I'm just gonna put this on a blending mode too. You can cycle through here and you can add whichever one you want but I think screen looks neat. I think screen looks cool. Screen is kind of a theme uh, for the day. You can preview any and all of these that you want. You can even make your own light leak layer um, if you like just by, because if I put this on a normal, you can see this is literally just like a light leak from an image, um, but you could take a soft round brush and your paint bucket tool and maybe the gradient tool and make your own strange collage of soft colors um, to overlay if that's what you um, prefer. Um, and it just makes it look interesting. Now, some of you may be uh, more familiar uh, with photo compositing than others. And so uh, maybe you have seen today a way where um, things could be done differently. I think the beauty of Photoshop is that we can all jump into the same program and do a lot of different things in different ways. Um, I'd love to see uh, any alternatives to some of these techniques in the Discord um, and see what you folks come up with. Um, like I said, I did uh, add as many of these uh, assets that I am using as I can into the starter file, but feel free to use your own photos um, to create your own uh, cool image. This is my uh, villain, my super villain, uh, maybe anti-hero portrait composition. Um, I'm pretty stoked about it. I think it looks pretty neat um, and I can't wait to see what you make. <laughs> Would love to work with nature than city, kind of easy for me. Then do that, Ash, do do that. If that is what um, speaks to you uh, more than a city, it's really up to you. These are your projects for you to do with as you like. Um, unfortunately, that's all the time I have for today. So thank you so much folks for joining me. It was a blast. Uh, Mia, this is so fun. Well, thank you, Mia. I'm glad that you, um, that you had a lot of a, a lot of fun with me today. Uh, Sam says the city adds a really cool element and feel to it. Thank you. I was trying to make it like kind of like like a uh, double exposure a little bit with um, kind of a 
um, spirit vibe, like my city screams kind of like maybe she runs around in that city and that's where she either um, stirs up trouble or fights crime. I'm not sure. Um, with her look, I think that she could have been either, you know, because she was pretty like cleaned up and stuff, but her mask is a little gritty. So maybe she's in between. Uh, maybe she's not light side or dark side. Maybe it's all about uh, the gray in between for her. I'm not sure. Um, Cornell, thank you very much. Uh, Clarissa, thank you as well. Um, it was wonderful chatting with you folks, but it's time for me to take off. So I will see you folks next week on Monday, bright and early, 9 a.m. Pacific time uh, for another challenge. Adios, folks.